and this rumor is just so insulting. An affair with a student, me and you, I would never do that. no secret that teen TV shows have gained a massive popularity among its initial target audience of high school students and beyond. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to this feeling of coming home late after a long and stressful day, just wanting to watch something lighthearted and comforting, something filled with a lot of highs and lows, dramatic plot twists, something that you can just get lost in, you know? And a lot of these popular shows offer just that, and they in fact have a lot of common themes and trends such as mystery, sensuality, backstabbing, plotting, scandal, and teacher-student relationships portrayed in an unrealistically bright light. To determine the extent of how viciously popular this trope in fact is, let's look at some of the examples of student-teacher romance in popular media over the last three decades. Starting off strong, Riverdale portrays a passionate and illicit affair between a 15-year-old Archie and his teacher, Miss Grundy. Resolution, when some of the parents become aware of the affair, Miss Grundy is forced to quit her position at Riverdale High School and leave town forever. And we have the infamous Pretty Little Liars that feature a romance between Arya and Ezra who start their entanglement before either one is aware of their actions ages or the fact that Ezra is a new English teacher at the school. But even after they find this out, they still continue dating and after a bit of back and forth, everyone ends up being okay with their relationship and they even get married. Isn't that sweet? Gossip Girl. Dan and Rachel, who begin their relationship with innocent coffee dates, and when Rachel is fired for being creepy and spending way too much time with a minor, she decides to take this opportunity to get intimate with him. And she's hired back, but she continues her affair with Dan and even has sex with him on school premises until their intimate relationship is discovered and she's fired once again. In the OC, we had the pleasure to witness a romance between Taylor and Dean Hess, which ended in Dean Hess being blackmailed and leaving school once and for all. Gilmore Girls. Yeah, in fact, one of the most ridiculous and disgusting student-teacher romance we had to watch unfold was between Paris and Asher, who was what, 40 years older than her? Yeah, this whole thing was handled so poorly. Not only Rory blamed Paris for her poor judgment instead of blaming Professor Fleming for grooming a teenager. The whole storyline just abruptly ends with Asher dying of a heart attack. I mean, I guess that can happen when your love interest is as old as ancient ruins. On Tree Hill, Nick and Brooke meet on an online dating app where Brooke is pretending to be a 23-year-old fashion designer. Later, when Nick is hired as one of the new teachers at the school Brooke goes to, he finds out her true age, but say it with me, decides to continue their affair Anyway, Brooke later catches Nick cheating on her with another girl and Nick resigns his teaching position at Tree Hill. The second Dawson's Creek begins, we are presented with romance between Pacey and Miss Jacobs. I found the best sex you'll never have. You're wrong about one thing, Pacey. You're not a boy. This eventually ends with people discovering their secret fling and Miss Jacobs being fired from her teaching job and leaving town. And we even have this trope in France when Ross begins a romantic relationship with his student Elizabeth right after she sends him a flirtatious note and asks him out. Hey, I just got my uh, teacher evaluations. Check out what this one student wrote. I loved Dr. Geller's class, mind-blowing lectures. Dr. Geller, you are definitely the hottie of the paleontology department. Ross eventually comes to his senses and ends this relationship because of their considerable age gap. Whew. 
Yeah. And those were just examples from the more well-known popular shows. We will be covering even more today. But for now, have you noticed just one common thing among all those examples that I listed? I have. And that thing is the lack of effing consequences. You must have noticed that the teachers always get away with their crimes and the worst they have to face is quitting their jobs and leaving town. I mean, granted, some die from a heart attack, but that is not a direct consequence of being a crip, is it? But hey, some even get to marry their student and live happily ever after. Yay! And I guess this is just something that really rubs me the wrong way, hence why I decided to dive a bit deeper into this topic today. So let's discuss the glamorization of student-teacher relationship, especially in teen media. Look at the student-teacher trope across literature in young adult and new adult books, and also revisit some of the TV shows to see if the portrayal of these relationships changed at all over time or not you can't date a student it's against the rules really it's not just found upon <laughs> i hope the majority of you watching already understand why student teacher relationship is inherently problematic but in case you don't i'm gonna make it really simple for you because it essentially comes down to two things age and power imbalance. Now, let me break it down further. I feel like the age aspect of it all is pretty straightforward. There is usually a significant age difference between two parties involved in romantic relationship here. Teacher slash professor is always the older one. They are fully developed adult, while a student, especially someone in high school or younger, are still developing emotionally and cognitively. So because of this fact alone, an unhealthy dynamic is always at play as the older, mature adult has the ability to manipulate or sway the student, even if unintentionally, and influence them in one way or another. And I noticed that when talking about this topic, be it a real life situation or fiction, people usually really draw attention to the age gap aspect of it all, which I totally understand, okay? I mean, for a lot of people in their early 20s even, a thought of dating a 15 or 16 year old is practicing for their exams or eating the sandwiches that their moms made them for lunch is not only the opposite of romantic, it is in fact absolutely disgusting. But I've also seen people say that they would have been okay with this type of relationship if the student had been slightly older, 18 plus, a consenting adult. So for example, if a 24 year old grad student dates a teacher in their late 20s, early 30s, that doesn't sound too too bad, right? Well, wrong. Because here's when we come to the second effed up thing about this relationship and that is power imbalance, which tends to get overlooked and not talked about as often as the age gap. I would like to argue though that any relationship between a student and a teacher will inevitably have elements of an asymmetrical power dynamic because a teacher in this scenario is someone who could significantly influence the student's academic standing, scholarships, career prospects, or any future opportunities. So there is no way that these aspects wouldn't compromise students' ability to give free and equal consent, even if from the outside it looks like there is no coercion involved whatsoever. Also, it is enough to read through a couple of testimonies to see how often this powerless feeling that absolutely crushes your confidence and self-esteem and leads you to staying in these relationships much longer is being mentioned by the victims. So yeah, I just wanted to scooch this section in as well. I guess to emphasize once again that while it might be easy to fall for the idea of student-teacher relationship 
especially if you are younger. Because just the notion that someone with so much influence and experience would pick you, you being a student, that you would compel them to cross their boundaries and risk their careers can be extremely misleading. And you can fall into this trap of believing that a student has some sort of control over their teacher, when in reality, the teacher always wields the power. Will you say my name? Okay, before we move to the discussion of student-teacher relationship in teen TV, I want to also look at this trope in books and just in general give you an overview of how prevalent it is in contemporary fiction, what is the attitude towards it, etc, etc. So, someone named in my smart era wrote on Reddit, this was in regards to their overall opinion about this trope. In the real world, icky, especially when there is a power imbalance. There is always a power imbalance. In fiction, hot. So, do we agree or disagree with this? Let's see. So first of all, some of the examples of the books with this trope present are Beautiful Mistake by V. Killen, Dark Notes by Pam Godwin, Need Me by Tessa Bailey, Lessons in Corruption by Guyana Darling, and even The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Well, a quick search on Book Talk, or better say Smart Talk, will provide you with even more, like tons of recommendations for teacher-student romance books. And from what I gathered, most of them are adult erotica fiction and people are treating this job well the way they would treat a king which I'm not gonna shame anyone for that. So I think it is perfectly okay to engage with this trope and enjoy it if it is a part of an adult book that is also being correctly labeled. And I believe that if you are a smart, fully developed adult reading about those relationships, maybe exploring your desires in a safe form of fiction, kudos to you. A gentle reminder that if a woman is reading a dark or forbidden romance and enjoying it, that does not mean that they will for sure want and seek the same kind of toxicity and power dynamics in their real lives as well. Let's remember our conversation about patronization of romance readers, the female Quixote and all that. I believe books I mentioned and those that appear peer on TikToks are all adult fiction that does not target teenagers. Although, of course, with the current algorithm and incorrect marketing, lines do get blurred quite frequently and wrong books end up in the hands of teens and even children. And that is why at this point, I want to highlight three books in particular that are technically listed as new adult, which if you don't know, new adult is a genre created for stories about slightly older young adults, usually between 18 to 25 years old. And the genre tends to feature more mature topics, trauma, violence, and also includes some spicy, smutty stuff. So again, technically we have this categorization, but in reality, I have seen those books that I'm about to mention being placed in YA section in my local bookstore. And let's be real, we also see teenagers right and left buying and reading those books. So let's talk about it. Okay, starting off strong with Gothicana by Runix, a very famous book on TikTok premises, which is described as sort of forbidden romance meets dark academia, although I would argue that categorizing this book as dark academia is an insult to true representatives of the genre. And if you look close enough, you will in fact notice the secret history, Ninth House, and if we were villains being deeply offended in my background. Anyways, this is a story of Corvina, a young girl who just lost her mother. Corvina receives an admission letter from the mysterious University of Verenmore, and when she arrives there, she's instantly swept away by that Deverell. I know these names are ridiculous, bear with me. Vat is a part-time professor working on his thesis, and although the University of Verenmore has a strict rule that prohibits any sort of student-teacher romance, Arvina and Vat are just not able to resist their mutual attraction. And from there on, it's just a series of repetitions, 
cliches and contradictions. Like for example, the only personality trait Carvina seems to have is the fact that she does not like to wear underwear, yet somehow Mr. Deverell is constantly ripping off her panties. Riddle me that. And if you want to know more, there are a lot of entertaining videos here on YouTube of people reading this masterpiece of a book. So go ahead and treat yourself. I for one tried to read this one. I was not strong enough to persevere. By the way, the author, I think, tried to make this forbidden romance more acceptable by aging our main characters appropriately. Like Corvina, I believe, is 21 and Vad is 28. Still, the power dynamics and very questionable smut scenes just make this all quite icky. Moving on, did you think you were gonna leave this video without ever hearing the name Colin Hoover? Whose channel do you think you're on, my friend? Let's talk about Slammed, Colin Hoover's first ever novel, which she self-published in 2012. Yep, this started it all, my friends. So this is a story of Laken, who is 18 years old. Yep, you see what she did there? Laken recently lost her father and she and her family, her mother and her little brother just moved to this new neighborhood in Michigan next door to our main male character, Will, who is, by the way, 21 years old. And this whole story is pretty reminiscent of Pretty Little Liars. Laken and Will going on a date, they are quite smitten with each other. But the next day when Laken goes for her first day in school, she finds out that Will is actually her poetry teacher. The rest of the book, as you can imagine, is filled with a lot of back and forth. We can't, but we must. And also tons of questionable poems, which would in fact make Emily Dickinson, Robert Frost and Pushkin roll in their graves. And the last thing I want to say about Slammed is although now I see this book being labeled as new adult, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the case when the book first came out. But we all know that Colleen doesn't really give two Fs about proper marketing of her books. So... And the last thing I'm gonna briefly mention is books in Zodiac Academy series. And this is the one I have the least information about. There are a crap ton of books in this series and also novellas. And it is all very confusing, to be honest. The main point is here we also have student-teacher relationship between Darcy, student, and Orion, teacher. And apparently the series end with the two of them being married and having kids. Yeah. So just to sum up, I think if this trope pops up in adult romance or erotica books and it is something you're curious about or you enjoy reading about it, I think fiction is a great safe outlet for exploring your desires and fantasies. But I'm not a fan of this trope in YA or even new adult books, seeing how blurry and thin the lines are between those two genres. And in general, I think it would take an extreme extremely, extremely skillful author to be able to portray this trope accurately in young adult books. And frankly, we don't see this trope in YA books nearly as often as we see it in teen TV. And I think the reason is that it is much easier to get away with this trope on screen, mainly because 99% of the time the actors playing teenagers do not look like teenagers whatsoever. So when people see a 25-year-old actress flirting with her 27-year-old teacher, for most of them, no sirens go off in their minds. Again, circling back to our discussion of age gaps and power imbalance, the former is the more tangible thing, a more striking red flag that you cannot miss, while power imbalance thing, you still to this day have to explain to a lot of people unfortunately. And in books, because all you have is letters on a piece of paper and your own imagination, when you read Gossip Girl books, for example, and see that Serena Vanderwoodson is 16, this is who you imagine that girl to be, instead of this lady who we got in TV series. So if this first girl were to date her teacher, that would immediately throw you off. But TV has the way of visual manipulation. Not only do they cast older actors to play teens, but they are aged further by makeup and fashion choices and just the way they speak 
speak, how they have this philosophical monologues, or how swiftly they deliver punchlines, you know? All this gradually removes the context of real-life dynamics, teens appear older, and they often get sexualized even before they entangle in any sort of forbidden relationship, plus the power imbalance aspect or just long-term effects that this kind of relationship can have on a person gets brushed off completely. So the majority of people do not even bat an eye when they see yet another unnecessary student-teacher plotline. I think we would definitely see more complaining if the media company started hiring actors that look younger or they started to cast actual teenagers, which this is a double-edged sword as well, because currently they do not do that because of the child labor laws. So yeah, that is why we have such a disproportion of student-teacher drop between YA books and teen TV shows. We don't have too many of the former, thank God, but oh boy, do we have a myriad of the latter. I don't wanna know, don't want you to go and leave me behind Okay, a little disclaimer before we kick off this part. There is a fantastic video on a similar topic by Elle Literacy in which she covered a lot of teen TV shows and their portrayals of student-teacher relationships. And although our videos have a bit of an overlap, for example, we are both discussing Pretty Little Liars and Riverdale in details, she definitely went into a lot of details of the shows that I will not be covering in my analysis, such as Gossip Girl, old and new one and a teacher so i highly recommend to check her video out okay let's finally discuss it teen tv and how terribly they handle student teacher romance every single time and of course we have to talk about pretty little liars i think we will never get enough of bitching about this show and its crimes against humanity and this show aired from 2010 to 2017 on abc family a very family appropriate show indeed so as i already mentioned a big part of the show was a romance between ezra teacher and aria student they were so popular you have no idea the official ship name was ezria and they were deemed couple goals and and absolutely adored by fans. Well, besides the obvious, you know, the romance between a teacher and a minor itself, let me point out just a couple of things that make this whole situation even more creepy and disgusting in hindsight. Number one, the reaction of everybody around Arya to her relationship with Ezra. Her friends, for one, were all encouraging her to continue seeing Ezra, never once suggesting that she was maybe being manipulated or taken advantage of. But even worse, let's talk about her parents, who at first showed some signs of outrage upon finding out about Ezra, for which they were portrayed as extremely villainous by the showrunners, sort of for being disapproving of this great romance and standing in the way of true love. Uh. But guess what? Later on, the parents end up accepting this relationship anyway. And Arya's mom, who was a teacher herself, by the way, even goes as far as helping Arya keep this relationship secret from her father. So not only did this woman fail to protect her daughter as a mother, but she also failed her legal obligation to report and protect the child who is attending the school. Number two, remember when I said in the very beginning that Arya and Ezra start their relationship before either one is aware of their actual ages? Well, that is not actually true. Because as the show goes on and gets more and more convoluted, it is revealed that Ezra was actually writing a true crime novel about Arya's friend, Allison, and that is why he initially approached Arya to simply gain information. But that only means that at the time he knew that Arya was underage and still pursued the relationship. And the thing is, at this very moment, the showrunners had the perfect opportunity to redeem themselves, to reveal the shocking secret and frame the situation as what it really was, grooming in which a 
grown ass man took advantage of a young girl to not only have relationship with her but also use her for research because he was obsessed with her missing friend yet another underage girl but i guess you can commit crimes left and right if you're just hot enough and number three fun little fact did you know that in the pretty little liars book ezra's character actually has a completely different resolution he's placed under arrest by school yeah he eventually goes free but he's out of his job and finally out of Arya's life and that is essentially the end of his storyline but what happened with the tv show is that the writers saw how popular ezra was among fans and how that can be used to their marketing advantage so they never actually got Got rid of Ezra's character and they continued to depict this relationship in a way that it was perceived acceptable but not only that they also wanted you to root for the characters to stay together despite literally dozens of red flags let us also expand on Archie and Miss Grundy's relationship in Riverdale as I mentioned their affair begins in the summer before school but the relationship ends fairly quickly as a result of parental intervention Miss Grundy is forced to resign and move out of town immediately. Once again, as I already said, the lack of real consequences for these teachers is baffling to me because guess what even after Miss Grundy moved out of Riverdale she still continued having inappropriate relationship with her students and that is what happens when you fail to involve police intervention I mean yes the predator will move out of the school that your children are attending but is that okay with you that they will continue grooming children elsewhere and it is also always teenagers who go out of their way to defend or save their teachers from prison or any sort of punishment. Grundy's not a predator. She's a good person. Archie, you don't have to defend me. No, he doesn't. Well, they're not denying it, are they? They're clearly guilty. I think the next step is we take this to Sheriff Keller and let the wheels of justice take over. Dad, you can't let that happen. Son, it's complicated. She didn't force me to do anything. I went after her. Everything that happened, I wanted to happen. And once again, whatever parents are trying to do to literally protect their children is presented to us as them getting in a way of love or them having any sort of weird revenge against some other characters in the show or something like that. Are you doing this, Mom? Putting Miss Gordy on trial. This isn't just about her. This is about him. I want you to see what kind of person Archie truly is. Well, if that is what this is about, your crazy grudge against my teenage son. I'm never going to stop being friends with Archie, Mom, ever. We are done here. Oh, we are far from being done. Stop. Anyways, Riverdale overall is such a shit show and they also never properly addressed the abuse and trauma that Archie went through. I guess they kind of hinted at that in season six, but... It was done very, very poorly. And I also want to talk about Life Unexpected, which this show, I never hear anyone talking about it. But its second season has arguably the worst student-teacher relationship portrayal that I have ever seen. So this one aired from 2010 to 2011. The story is about Lux Cassidy, a young girl who tracks down her biological parents so that they would sign away their rights so she could be emancipated and not have to live in foster homes anymore. But instead of awarding her this, the judge decides to put her back in the care of her biological parents and from there on, naturally, a lot of drama happens. So this is kind of our overall premise. A bit ridiculous, sure, but nothing too, too evil. However, in the show's second season, Lux meets Eric Daniels at her father's bar. They have a crazy out-of-this-world connection. Do they really? I believe they kiss at the end of the night, but the next day they bump into each other at school. And of course, it is revealed that Eric is a new teacher there. So Eric is 23 while Lux is 16, so there is a 7 year age difference between them. And at first, the show tries to play this game of Eric being freaked out about their age gap and how wrong this whole thing with her was. So for like one or two episodes, he's making pathetic efforts to stay 
stay away from Lux. But in between that, he also starts dating her aunt, which you would think would be counterproductive and complicate things even further. But what do I know? Anyways, the guy doesn't last too long, okay? At one point, they go to a school camping trip, which is where Eric tells Lux that he doesn't want any distance between them. And they proceed to swim in the lake and kiss under the moonlight, which call the fucking policeman. The things get even more creepier and weirder after that because they start secretly dating and checking into a bed and breakfast and spending nights together. Like, it is bad, bad, okay? You are wrong if you think that we are done here because later on there is also this additional storyline that reveals that Lux's former foster dad used to sexually appear her. Learning that, Eric starts to slowly pull away from her and he explains that he feels that he's doing the same thing that her old foster dad did, which yes exactly but on top of that you are also her teacher you creep anyways in the next episode lux's parents find out about their secret relationship the dad is super angry at first but they still do not report him to the police eric promises to quit his job and leave town and never have contact with lux ever again but he tells the parents that he still loves lux and asks them to give her the christmas present that he bought for her and instead of throwing it into the trash bin right away, the parents actually give this present to Lux. And it's a compass with a note that says, to help you find your way. Love, Eric. You know what? I think I'm gonna actually throw up now. So yeah, that was Life Unexpected. And mind you, this whole Lux, Eric, student teacher thing only got somehow resolved by the end of the second and final season and I am convinced that had they not had to wrap the show up due to low ratings Eric would have been back in Lux's life by season 3 or 4 maximum and they could have even been the end game the same way Ezra and Arya was and overall life unexpected really took a page out of Pretty Little Liars book, but it got even more icky and disgusting with the whole abuse plotline and the way that the show just presented Eric as this good guy leading Lux in the right direction. Jail time. So those were the shows that I wanted to dive a little deeper in and rant about. Like I said, the way that neither one of the series ever showed any sort of consequences for the abusers or how minors also just moved on with their lives, never once showing any signs of trauma really gets under my skin. I think that oftentimes teen dramas just get too wrapped up in trying to entertain or shock its viewers so they end up throwing one thing after another but sadly rarely do they want to deal with a messy fallout of a relationship or an aftermath of events that those teenagers had to live through. Now, for those of you who want a true-to-life, accurate, and raw depiction of student-teacher relationship, I actually have two recommendations for you. One is a book, and the other one is, believe it or not, a teen TV show. Starting off with a book, my recommendation would be My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, which is actually one of my favorite books of all time. In this book, we follow Vanessa in sort of two timelines. Past timeline in which she's 15 and she's slowly being groomed by her 44-year-old teacher, Mr. Strain. And present timeline in which Mr. Strain is being accused of sexual abuse by a former student, not Vanessa, another one. And we see Vanessa struggling with a choice of whether to remain silent and continue telling herself that theirs was a love story or to finally realize what truly happened to her and see the evil and abusive nature of that relationship. And this book is simultaneously heavy yet incredible and powerful on so many levels. It truly shows the long-term effects that the abuse 
abuse can have on a person through Vanessa constantly sabotaging herself and her relationship, not being able to stay in healthy relationship and constantly just going back to the circle of abuse even after she reaches adulthood. And the story is even more nuanced because Vanessa is very morally gray character. We see her making so many mistakes and stupid decisions. The ending of this book as well was just super real. I like that it did not sugarcoat anything or promise the happily ever after. I personally really appreciated that. Yeah, I know this book was hyped for a while on social media, but I personally don't see it being mentioned that often anymore, but it honestly deserves all the hype and all the praise it gets and even more. And my teen show recommendation would be Cruel Summer. So Cruel Summer follows two teenage girls in Texas in the 90s. Kate Wallace, a popular girl with a seemingly perfect life who one day goes missing. And Jeanette Turner, the nerdy outcast who takes Kate's place while she's gone. She literally starts dating Kate's boyfriend and hanging out with Kate's friends. When Kate is later found alive, she accuses Jeanette of knowing about her abduction and failing to report it. And we as viewers are left to find out who is actually telling the truth. Now, although I'm not going to spoil or even discuss the biggest twist of the show, still, if you haven't watched it yet, I would urge you to skip ahead or click out of this video. Granted, this video is full of spoilers for other shows, but this one I would really recommend you to watch if you want to see a true representation of student-teacher relationship, manipulation, and grooming. So just come back here once you finish the series, okay? So the teacher-student relationship in the show is the one between Kate Wallace and the assistant principal of the local high school, Martin Harris. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is by far the best portrayal of this type of relationship in teen series that I have ever seen. The Cruel Summer team worked closely with grooming consultant Dr. Shayla Moder and it shows. The show's runner, Tia Napolitano, says, We really wanted to invite the audience to think about a subject that isn't talked about very much and can be difficult to understand. So Sheila's input in that sense was hugely helpful. And it truly was refreshing to see grooming in the uncomfortable light instead of it getting so romanticized, even though Martin comes off as a nice, mild-mannered guy. Literally everything he does is textbook grooming. He opens up about his traumatic past, agrees to keep Kate's secrets, tells Kate that she seems like an adult. Just the way that you were mingling with the adults, I thought I mistook you for one of them. One of the moms? One of the adults, and it was just for a minute. Why didn't you say that? I didn't know you then love bombs her and showers her with compliments. And I especially love that they interrupted moments of the narrative with scenes between Kate and her therapist. And her therapist literally spells out Martin's tactics, breaking down for Kate and for us viewers how grooming works. Let's revisit the concept of grooming. A groomer isolates their victim. He saw your unfulfilled need to confide in someone, then positioned himself as the singular person to fulfill that need. Groomers pose as saviors. When in reality, they're predators. And we also never see any explicit sexual situations or any other physical intimacy between a 16-year-old Kate and Martin. So the camera never lets the audience make their relationship a hot, sexy, or fairy tale moment, which I really appreciated. Because, for example, even though I haven't watched a teacher myself, I know that a lot of people criticize it for unnecessary sexual content that did not really add anything to the overall story. Cruel Summer, in contrast, really focuses on Kate's trauma and the long term effects of being groomed. So, yeah, although Cruel Summer is far from being a perfect show, there were a couple of storylines that didn't really 
go anywhere and some of the characters can be super annoying. Still, it definitely did so much better than its predecessors in portraying such a difficult dynamic of student-teacher relationship. And for that, I applaud the writers and the showrunners, because it's about time we moved forward from the horrible glamorization of this trope that we witnessed in the past. When researching for this video, I also saw people mention HBO's generation as a good portrayal of teacher-student dynamic. The relationship in that series is that of a 17-year-old Chester and 30-year-old Sam. I haven't watched the show myself, so cannot really comment on anything. And I believe the show is cancelled at this point as well, but I still wanted to mention it. And another one I saw was Prissy and Mr. Phillips' relationship in Anne with an E. Again, I haven't watched it, and again, I'm pretty sure it is cancelled. But from what I read online, the show doesn't romanticize their relationship in any way, shape, or form, and actually shows a dangerous reality of teenagers being exposed to abuse, which we'll love to see. And that was it from me for today. As always, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!